What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and with projector technology improving and projectors gaining popularity over the past few years, more and more people are interested in buying a projector for gaming. Not only does a projector give you a huge screen perfect for playing games, but there are actually a few projectors out there that are made specifically for gamers. So today I wanna to tell you what to look for when choosing a gaming projector and give you my top five gaming projector picks. So when most people think of a projector, they think of putting it in a dark room so they can use it to watch movies. Well, even though most projectors work well for movies, if you plan on gaming on a projector, then there are a few things you need to consider, especially if you're a hardcore gamer. And those things are input lag, refresh rate, brightness and contrast. So in this video, I'm gonna break down each of those four topics and then go over some good projector options depending on your budget. So first we'll start with the most important topic which is input lag. Input lag is the main thing that sets gaming projectors apart from other projectors. So as described by Wikipedia, input lag or input latency is the amount of time that passes between sending an electrical signal and the occurrence of a corresponding action. In other words, when you press a button on your controller, input lag determines how fast your character moves on the screen. This can range from a weird sensation in some games to an absolute nightmare in fast paced games like first person shooters. Now input lag is kind of subjective since some people notice it and others don't, but since I like to keep things simple, here is a chart with my personal recommendations for input lag numbers depending on the type of games you play. So as you can see, input lag is measured in milliseconds and lower is better. The important thing to keep in mind here is that with fast paced games, every millisecond counts and the player with the least input lag has a huge advantage. So if you've ever wondered why you seem to play badly on certain TVs and you couldn't figure out why, it might have been input lag. So this brings us to our next topic, which is refresh rate, since a projector or TV's refresh rate has a direct impact on input lag. So for example, let's use the BenQ TK700 STI. So this is marketed as a 4K gaming projector, and it has 16 milliseconds of input lag with 4K at 60 hertz, eight milliseconds of input lag with 1080p at 120 hertz, and four milliseconds of input lag with 1080p at 240 hertz. So if you're using a game console, don't expect to get four milliseconds of input lag, since the Xbox Series X and PS5 don't support 240 hertz. Now you can do 1080p at 120 hertz with these consoles, so if your game supports it, you may be able to get input lag as low as eight milliseconds, which is still pretty good. Okay, so you might be wondering how those input lag numbers from the BenQ projector compare to a modern TV. So for comparison, we're gonna use the LG C1 OLED, which is a popular TV for console gamers since it has fantastic image quality and supports up to 4K at 120 hertz. While the LG C1 has around 10 milliseconds of input lag at 60 hertz and around five milliseconds of input lag at 120 hertz. So as you can see, even compared to a popular and expensive TV, a modern gaming projector isn't really that far off. And you actually get the added benefit of 240 hertz, which a lot of TVs like the LG don't support. And before I get off the topic of input lag, one thing I wanna mention that's super important is to make sure you're using game mode. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people spend thousands of dollars on a TV and don't make sure it's in game mode when they play games. So for example, on that same LG C1 TV I just talked about, if you're not in game mode, you get almost 90 milliseconds of input lag and it's even worse with some projectors. Now some TVs and projectors are smart enough to recognize that you're playing a game and they'll automatically switch Switch itself into game mode, but this is something you definitely want to check. Okay, so the input lag and refresh rate competes with the TV, but what about our next topic, which is brightness? Well, as most people know, sunlight or rooms with a lot of ambient light are a projector's worst nightmare, and unfortunately, that is still the case. Now, yes, there are some really bright gaming projector options out there, but even with the projector that's really bright, it's still not gonna look good in a room with a lot of ambient light. Now, that being said, some projectors are bright enough that you can close a few curtains and game on a 100 inch screen with a few lights on, you just have have to consider that if you're playing a really dark game, that it might be kind of hard to see in the shadows. And this brings us to our last topic, which is contrast. So one trade-off that often comes with bright projectors is low contrast, which leads to bad shadow detail. A projector with low contrast or bad black levels is not gonna look great in dark scenes. This means if you're playing a dark game or maybe you walk into an alley or a dark room, you might have a hard time making out certain details. And unfortunately, it's not an easy thing to research since just like TV manufacturers, projector manufacturers often inflate their contrast ratio numbers to make it look good on paper. And because of this, the only way to know for sure is to see it for yourself or you can watch reviews to see how it performs in real life. 
Okay, so now that we've gone over all of that, what are some good gaming projector options? Well, I'm gonna give you my top five recommendations and I'll sort them from the highest price to the lowest. All right, so if you've got deep pockets and you're looking for an ultra short throw, then you can go with the Epson LS500. The LS500 is pretty expensive being priced at $5,000 for the 100 inch version, but it's insanely bright with 4,000 lumens and it has an input lag around 13 milliseconds. Aside from the price, the main downsize to this projector is that it's not a true 4K projector and it only supports up to 60 hertz. But if you have deep pockets and you're looking for something really bright with good input lag, then take a look at the LS500. And if you're looking for a less expensive traditional projector, I have a few options. The first option is the projector I mentioned earlier in the video, which is the BenQ TK700 STI. This is a 3000 lumen 4K projector that goes for around 1500 bucks. It has a great throw ratio producing a 100 inch screen from around six and a half feet away. It has input lag as low as four milliseconds at 240 hertz. It runs full Android TV and it works great for movies since it has good color accuracy. So if you're looking for a projector that works fantastic for games and movies, this is a good option. And if you wanna spend less than a thousand bucks, then you can go with the full HD projector. And a good option here is the BenQ TH685i. This projector has 3,500 lumens, eight milliseconds of input lag at 120 hertz, and it usually sells for around 800 bucks. Another sub $1,000 option that's been around for a few years now is the Optima GT1080 HDR, which has 3,800 lumens, an input lag of eight milliseconds at 120 hertz, and you usually goes for around 800 bucks. And if you're on a really tight budget, then the Optima HD 146X is another great option priced around $550. It has 3,600 lumens and an input lag of 16 milliseconds at 60 hertz. Now it doesn't have the HDR compatibility of the GT1080 HDR or the BenQ TH685i, but for the money, it's a great gaming projector. And I do hope this video helped you out if you're in the market for a gaming projector. And I will put a couple of links here to some videos that might help you out, including the review of the BenQ TK700 STI. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.